Whether you've been using Unreal Engine since its initial preview state for Unreal 5, or you are just starting out with 5.2, more often than not, you have probably seen this weird issue with nanite meshes and ray tracing, which is where we start to get these weird blotchy shadows on our meshes, which kind of look like a tiger camo, and it just completely destroys the scene artistically. And up until recently, there wasn't really any good fix for it. No matter what you did, no matter what light you moved, it would always look like this. And any type of change that was presented was an artistic sacrifice, or you had to completely turn off ray tracing. But luckily, as of 5.1 onwards, uh, we no longer have to take such drastic measures. In fact, there's actually just a few things that we can do in order to fix it uh, without having to do those compromises. But before I do that, let's actually talk about Nanite, at least from a high level and, and why we're getting this. So uh, what Nanite is, is it's actually this thing called, well, it's basically virtual geometry. And what this essentially allows us to do is it allows us to stream in our, our geometry that gives us a, ability to have billions. And I mean, I literally mean billions of polygons. And uh, that allows us to get in it an incredible amount of detail. But of course, um, it also adds in the level of being able to dynamically change the level of detail or the amount of polygons that are on screen from a specific mesh at any given time, right? And, and that is a very powerful thing. But the problem is, at least from the point of view of what we're trying to do here, is it was never meant to work with ray trace shadows originally. And I mean standalone ray tracing. Um, Lumen uses hardware ray tracing, but that's beside the point right now. Uh, bottom line is, is it was never meant to be used with just ray tracing, right? It was actually built to work and incorporate the new virtual shadow maps as well as the Lumen lighting system, which we'll we'll get into in other videos because those are those are topics by itself. But um, uh, basically, what uh, what was happening uh, from a high level view is that ray tracing looks at this thing called a fallback mesh, which is basically in place for when someone either runs the engine, uh, the project, or a game with hardware that doesn't support Nanite. And what it would do is it would default back to a, a mesh uh, that would operate under the old level of detail system that's been in place since... Uh, early Unreal Engine, uh, where I think um, Unreal 3, right? I'm probably wrong, probably gonna get some slack for that, but that's the truth. And, um, and basically, we're wanting to figure out a way that we can uh, change it, right? But uh, we'll kind of get into uh, what the fallback mesh looks like and how it's affecting it, as well as some a, a fix around it, which we don't want to do but we'll go over it anyways but obviously bottom line it it breaks our scene right and up until now there there has only been three three fixes for it which i'll go into right now so uh the first one obviously is turning off the ray trace shadows right and which we can we can do that by selecting our light source um in this case it's the directional light but if you have multiple lights in the scene um, you'd want to do it for those ones. And, and this typically happens if you migrated a project from uh, Unreal 4 where it was using ray tracing or it was on by default, right? So you might have to do that. But you can actually go into the light itself and under the advanced section at the top, and if we scroll down, uh, we're going to see there's this cast ray trace shadows. Well, we can, uh, if we turn that off, obviously it gets rid of the issue. It goes and defaults back to the virtual shadow maps for our our shadows, right? Now, while virtual shadow maps are very nice and clean uh, when you're not using uh, or going for the, the soft shadows, um, in fact, they're actually really high resolution, um, it's just that when you try and use soft shadows, and you can actually see it now, I'm actually gonna make this kind of a drastic change, right? Is that the 
the shadows don't really hold up, right? And I'll actually put a better preview on screen. It will just show how inferior the virtual shadow map soft shadows are. I'm also going to introduce the 5.2 version, which it even further shows the difference between the two as they, they did some fixes to it. So we're going to want to kind of avoid this, right? So let's let's look at the other option, right, that we had, which was uh, turning off two-sided shadows on geometry. And, and what that introduced, well, it did kind of fix it. Let me just turn this back on so you can see it. But you can see we're, we're back with the blotchy ugliness. And if I go and I enable the, um, the C-bar, which uh, just for the sake of it, I'll leave in the description or on the screen. Uh, so that way you can, uh, you can put it in an experiment yourself. But I'm going to put it in and it's ray tracing dot shadow. Oh, uh, shadow enable two sided geometry. Now, by default, it's on. If I turn it off, it, it gets rid of it. But watch what happens when I move my um, my timeline, which right now is moving the directional light, is that you're seeing that there's some really bad leaking going on. And, and that's something we we don't want we don't want to introduce another problem while solving one so we're going to try and avoid this right this is one that we no longer have to use actually so i'm just going to turn it back on because we we're not going to work with that anymore the second one is sorry the third one is going to be manipulating the fallback mesh of our static mesh which we have currently here now we can actually visualize what this is by going to show in our static mesh editor and turning on the fallback mesh option here now you can see uh with a little bit of a flicker there that we're getting a very low quality version of the mesh right and you can see here if we switch back and forth let's do uh control n back and forth here is that uh, we're getting a huge difference. And this is what is causing those blotchy shadows because it's not holding the shape, right? And we we can, of course, change this. And that's using the third solution, which is where we change the fallback relative error. Now, if I set this, which I will right now, uh, just so you can see it, is that it's going to basically... Um, take the mesh and it's going to bring it up to pretty much to the point where there's almost no geometry being taken away um, which you can see here that if I come in close and I switch between these two there's very very small difference very very small but it's it's still there so despite me enabling or setting that to zero so that it's pretty much the full mesh you can see that there's actually still even with that, there is still the uh, getting some of that, you know, blotchy shadows, just in a smaller amount. But how it would typically be used with is that we would uh, introduce this uh, other C bar, which I'll also include, called ray tracing uh, normal bias, which will sort of offset uh, the shadow, right? So if I set it to one, you can notice that it kind of disappears right, in some areas, but we can still kind of see it. Um, you probably can't, uh, at least on the screen right now. But uh, at least on my end, I see that there are some issues in the background still, right? So it doesn't fully fix it. So let's, let's go on to the actual fix here. So let me just reset some things so that we can, um, we can immediately jump in and um, get it solved. So first and foremost, there's now a new option for ray tracing now, which is where we can actually set the, the traces to happen on the streamed mesh, which is the nanite mesh, as opposed to the fallback. And it's a very simple C-bar, and I'm going to leave it in the description and on screen. And that is ray, r.raytracing.nanite.mode and one 
and we're going to set that to one. It's currently at zero. Done. Right now, obviously, we're still getting that issue of our um, our little blotchiness. Now, that doesn't have to do with the proxy mesh or anything because uh, what happens is that if I get close, you can actually see that in some places it's getting the sort of the, the shadow issue and then in others it's fine now the reason for this is let's just go ahead and go into our nanite visualizations and go into triangles so you can see this is that what's actually going on is our shadows are reacting to the lod of nanite so if i back up it's getting more intense if i come in it's getting less intense in fact it's getting to the point where um you know it's looking clean so what we can do is we can adjust uh, the LOD that is currently being seen, or at least the offset of it. So we can actually tell it to uh, push the LODs further back so that way we can have a higher quality one, you know, for longer distance. So on top of the R dot ray tracing nanite mode, uh, we're going to do another one which will be specifically for nanite, and that's r dot nanite dot uh, view uh, view mesh lod uh, bias dot min, and this will also be included, by the way. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set the minimum lod that it can have, and I, I found that at least going to five is pretty good, just as a safety measure. Um, of course the requirements and performance costs will vary depending on uh, the size of your scene as well as uh, how far away how much stuff is going to be in camera and your system specs so you're going to want to play around with this value and see what works best for you because sometimes you just don't need to be this drastic um, so I've set it to negative five now what we're going to do is we're going to add our third C bar which is the offset. So with this offset, um, if I say set it to a big number, right now it's at zero. If I set it up a couple of LODs, let's go up to four. You can see our shadows are ugly again, <laughs> right? And that's because what we just did is we basically told it to go up uh, a couple of LODs at this distance. Let's set it to 10. Let's look how bad this will look, you know? So you can see here, it's actually adjusting our LOD based off of where we are. And if I back up, you can see that, you know, it's going max. And as I get closer, it's changing, right? So we should see a reflect in, in the, uh, the shadows, right? So let's go ahead and we can actually start the LOD off further back. And like I said, we set the minimum to negative five, right? So let's actually do that. I'm going to set it to negative five and voila our shadows are fixed, right? And that's because we basically told the uh, the nanite tri triangles, at least at this distance, to be full resolution, right? Now, like I mentioned, is that you don't want to, you know, do this all the time. It's more of a last resort, right? But you can see here that we can actually go really far back and I'm not seeing any changes. Shadows are still holding up even at this distance, right? and uh, so that's really good but of course what you would want to do is you know just because of performance you're probably going to want to figure out the le like the furthest distance that you're going to want to go say here and you're going to want to play around with the uh, sort of the minimum right and of course like at least in this it looks like maybe um, LOD2 is good enough for this distance Right? Because, I mean, the most important thing is that when we're here uh, in camera, we're not noticing those shadows. If we're this far back, we're not going to see too much. So we're going to want to, you know, play around with those values and figure out what works best for us. But um, that basically concludes it. So thank you very much for sticking around for this video. And I would really appreciate uh, if you liked, subscribed, and even shared this video because... Um, I'm trying to grow the channel as well as make sure that 
some new updated fixes are available to people. Um, there are the old fixes were great, but now uh, with the newer things have been implemented, uh, it would be great for the word to be spread. Uh, but stay tuned for more tutorials. I'm hoping to be able to get a couple out um, within the next couple weeks. Um, but until then, uh, thank you very much and bye for now.